Tonight on AFN Korea Nightly News, sailors make a special port call visit in Busan. And later, airmen at Kunsan respond to an explosive emergency. These stories and more coming up on your Frontline Network News. of AFN Korea Nightly News. Broadcasting from our headquarters in Seoul, I'm Specialist Ryan Harris. The USS Gridley is making a port visit in Korea after spending two months at sea. While the sailors get some much needed time on the shore, some of them are spending it doing what they can to help some less fortunate Koreans. Army Sergeant Joshua Johnson has more. Two months out at sea can seem like an eternity. When a volunteer roster was posted on the USS Gridley to help some handicapped Koreans during their port visit in Pusan, Korea, electronics technician third class Dorico White was one of the first to sign up. But he didn't see it as just an excuse to get off the ship. And to come out and be able to help, you know, bring a smile to a handicapped, you know, child's face is, is awesome. Like this fellow right here. But like I, I've never done it. It's, it's truly awesome to be able to come out and do, do something as beautiful as this. The Chongsan Rehabilitation Center in Pusan is a living facility for people with mental and physical disabilities. The sailors volunteered to come here and help clean the building and interact with its residents, taking time out of their brief time ashore to lend a helping hand. And this is what America is about. We don't want to be myopic and just narrow-minded and just, you know, sitting on our little corner. You know, going abroad, you know, and going to all the sports have afforded our sailors tremendous opportunity to expand their horizon, to expand their minds, to educate them, to inform them about other cultures. As uncomfortable as seeing people in these conditions can be, spending a small amount of time helping out those less fortunate is an experience these sailors will never forget. I'm Army Sergeant Joshua Johnson, Busan, Korea. Promotion for enlisted service members is an important milestone in their military careers. And service members usually share this milestone with their families. Senior Airman Kendall Bailey tells us how one soldier in Korea's family witnessed her promotion from half a world away. Ladies and gentlemen, friends, co-workers, family members. A dormitory room is probably the last place a soldier would expect to see a promotion ceremony. But technology is changing the way some soldiers look at them. One soldier made her family part of this important milestone in her career, even though they're thousands of miles away. I just think it's so important that my family was part of it because they don't, my immediate family especially, was never in the military. And they haven't seen anything like this. I promoted a sergeant in Iraq and now I'm in Korea promoting a staff sergeant. So to have them be there and actually see the ceremony and have my grandfather, who's a World War II vet, be there, it just, it just meant a lot to me and, and them. Promotion ceremonies are a frequent occurrence at USAG Youngsan, but what makes this one a little different is how Sergeant Kramer involved her family with her promotion ceremony. Well, this ceremony was different because we used webcams, so it was just so neat for my family and me to be in real time, you know, being able to see and hear each other, uh, just made it real different and real special. <laughs> Sergeant Kramer's grandfather is a veteran of World War II and says he wouldn't have missed his granddaughter's promotion for anything. <laughs> Sergeant Kramer says she couldn't be happier that her family got to be part of the ceremony. Senior Airman Kendall Bailey, Youngsan, Korea. Coming up, a local Korean gives service members a little culture. Stay with us. I'll see if I remember. This is your AFN Korea weather forecast for Friday, July 25th. In Daegu, expect rain showers with a high of 88 and a low of 79. Saturday, expect more rain showers. In Kunsan, expect rain showers with a high of 82 and a low of 77. Saturday, expect more rain. At Osan, expect rain showers with a high of 80 and a low of 70. Saturday, expect more rain. In Seoul, rain showers with a high of 82 and a low of 70. Saturday, expect more rain showers. At Casey, expect rain showers with a high of 81 and a low of 73. Saturday, expect more rain showers. This weather forecast has been brought to you by your 607 Weather Squad. A familiar phrase for service members is train as you fight. 
This statement has a unique meaning for Wolfpack airmen training for the peninsula-wide operational readiness inspection. Army Sergeant Rob Frazier shows us how the 8th Civil Engineering Squadron reacts to one exercise with real-world implications. Airmen from Kunzan's Explosive Ordnance Disposal, or EOD, team respond to a concern at the water treatment facility. Well, what we had was uh, we had a call in from the uh, CEUCC designating that Building 100 had a suspect package outside the building. For this particular mission, Sergeant Gay and his team are leading first with the HD-1. We sent a robot downrange and uh, determined that there was an actual suspect package uh, on scene. And at that time, we took appropriate actions. The HD-1 provides the EOD with an additional and vital component, safety. Because this machine goes out first, members are able to guide its movements by remote control from a safe distance and evaluate the package in question. After reviewing information from the HD-1, the team sends Sergeant Gay out to dispose of the package with the EOD explosives. After a few minutes, he returns to the safe area and the team disposes of the package. Pretty much went by the book. Uh, we showed up on scene, made contact with our EOC representative, and also made contact with the uh, fire chief, who was our uh, incident commander on scene. Um, from that point on, we just coordinate, you know, who needs to be doing what and uh, how many people need to be evacuated, what buildings need to be evacuated. They're focused and ready to respond at a moment's notice. And it's with this train-as-you-fight mentality, these airmen proudly walk away from another successful mission safely. I'm Army Sergeant Rob Frazier, reporting from Kunsan Air Base, Korea. Being ready for anything is a key part of any job in the military. Airman Shannon Ofiara takes us to Osan, where firefighters show exactly how they stay ready for anything. On even the laziest of summer days, you won't find Osan's fire department spending too much time in the shade. When there's no real-world emergencies, there's plenty of time to practice. Firefighter Crew Chief Staff Sergeant Scott Evil has spent the last six years practicing. Well, the fire department is manned 24-7. Uh, holidays. When everybody is out having a good time, we're in the station, we're training, we're studying, doing upgrade training. With all that training to do, there's only so many buildings on Osan to pretend to save. But because emergencies are never predictable, neither are the exercises. Fighting fire, it could be in any room and it could be different scenarios. Uh, today, we did something a little bit different from the last time we trained on the facility. Every building's different. We, it has to be done differently all the time. The fake smoke in this real dorm building is more than just a dramatic effect. These firefighters have to train like they fight. So when the real thing happens, Sergeant Evil and the rest of Osan's fire department are ready for all of it. Even when they can't see any of it. When we go into a building, and if it's that full of smoke, we're down low, where, where the visibility is a lot better. Check the door. And we start with a right-hand search. We keep our hand and our bodies on the right-hand side of the wall, or we go to the left side of the wall, depending on which way we want to do like a search pattern. This time wasn't real, but the lesson was to be prepared for the unexpected every day. Senior Airman Shannon Ofiara, Osan Air Base, Korea. Now for a look at the exchange rate and gas prices at your local AFI service station. Since the birth of the U.S. and Republic of Korea alliance, local civilians have played a key role in military communities across the peninsula. It's this companionship that has shaped the alliance into what it is today. In our next story, specialist Will Roberts shows us one Korean teacher in Area 1 that has personally dedicated his life to bringing the U.S. closer to the people of Korea. Meet Mr. Sung Ha Yi. For more than 50 years, Mr. Yi has been known as a Sung Se Nim, which is Korean for teacher. 24 years ago, Mr. Yi became a certified Korean language instructor for the University of Maryland. He has taught more than 70 classes at University of Maryland campuses in Area 1, and Mr. Yi says learning even a little Korean can help break down the language barrier between foreigners and the people of Korea. Uh, one of the big problems is the misunderstanding between the us. The first is that listening and speaking is about skills. So we are mutual uh, introduction to others, 
They are making some good friends. The relationship Mr. Yi has with his students is one of sharing and understanding. While Mr. Yi is in class to teach, he considers himself a student as well because he gets to improve his English language skills and share his life experiences with his students. The object of learning is between we are human, between you know, we are sharing all these ideas and information to sharing the information too. And if you ask Mr. Yi about what he thinks about his career, well, he'll tell you. I love the teaching. I love the teaching, especially. I have many old students. I'm very happy because I'm very proud of teaching class. If you live in Area 1, head over to the Camp Casey Education Center, where a couple of days a week you can find Mr. Yi in this classroom, continuing to do what he loves, teach. I'm Specialist Will Roberts, Camp Casey, Korea. Two groups of airmen at Kunsan have established a friendly athletic rivalry. Air Force Sergeant Aaron Drobnak shows us one of the ways these groups challenge each other on the field. Kunzan airmen have many ways to have fun and stay involved with current events, but most probably haven't played kickball since they were kids. Team 5-6 and Ace decided bringing back this playground game would be a fun way to build camaraderie between the two groups. We want to kind of make it so that, you know, when you're on base and you see, you know, Sergeant so-and-so or Airman so-and-so, you can, you know, you know who they are and you can speak to them opposed to everybody just kind of walking by each other. We want it to be more friendly, more family oriented. Camaraderie and team building might be the goal of the game, but both sides admit that there is a little competitiveness between the two groups as well. The last two basketball tournaments we have, it was ace versus five, six in the championships. So the Team 5-6 won the first game, the first tournament, and Ace won the second tournament. So it's kind of like a little friendly rivalry. Kickball is just a start. Both groups are planning more events in the coming months. If anybody wants to play, they get a team together, and we can have play softball, kickball, football, dodgeball, volleyball, <laughs> any kind of ball <laughs> you want to play, we can play. And that's pretty much our goal is to make it um, a continuous thing every month. And if it gets bigger, then, you know, definitely. But this is like kind of like our first stage, our trial period. And we'll see where we go from here. Team 5-6 took this round, defeating Ace 9-1. I'm Air Force Sergeant Aaron Drobnak, Kunsan Air Base, Korea. If you're tired of your usual workouts and looking for something a bit more exotic, the Camp Walker Fitness Center has just what you need. Specialist Heather Kraut takes us there to show us a new class that will make you want to move your hips. The Camp Walker Fitness Center is known for its variety of exercises, from water aerobics to salsa dancing, and now they have added hula dancing to that list. Miley Lesa is a student at the hula dancing class. She says to her, hula is more than just dancing. Well, for me, it's, it's the passion of doing it, so... I enjoy it just because it's a passion of mine and I, I love it. It's like a cultural thing. I like it because of um, what my culture is. Hula is a traditional Hawaiian dance. It tells a story with its motions, translating the island's chants and songs. Um, more of storytelling. It's about passion, love, laughter, friends, family. The dance, the dance, the hula dancing can be anything. You could storytell about everything and anything. It's a dance that means something to us. You could do love, which is like a love, like this, or you could do it this way, you know, and when you try to tell a story, you can always start off like this. This may not be Hawaii, but you can certainly get a feel for it with this exotic workout. I'm Specialist Heather Krause, Camp Walker, Korea. That's the news for this evening. Tune in to AFN The Eagle or Thunder AM for music, news, and information for your area. You can also check us out on the web at afnkorea.net. Thanks for watching your Frontline Network News. I'm Specialist Ryan Harris. Have a great night.